Aha, so without further ado, um, what's it like being painted blue every day and does the makeup need to be reapplied often? <laughs> All the time. Okay. Um, uh, uh, it was okay. They allowed a two hour slot, it was very easy for me. Um, because poor old Dan Starkey and the Macintosh they were in the chair for four hours you know, right. to get whereas me they shaved my head put on a, a barrier cream and then just slap on this blue body paint which is water based so, oh, okay. so it comes off easily the, the, the worst bit about it and it's really just a, a whinge mm. is they spray on this uh, fixing agent mm. with the idea that it fixes it in place but you perspire from underneath, right. so it doesn't really work. So during the day, you, you get touched up. And things, so. so yeah. So, and um, the only other thing they do is uh, the eye has a black eyeliner. Oh, okay. Which reacts with my eyes and makes them water, and that's it gives Dorian the glistery eyes that they go on about. Oh. So it's the no special thing about my eyes other than <laughs> it doesn't like mascara. Right. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> um, and. Um, uh, and uh, when I got the body, the fingernails is blue uh, nail polish. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's it. Um. very straightforward. And I'm only painted like on the arms. I'm only painted yeah. up to about there, uh, and the, on the head, and it's down to just just below me, me boobies. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, I think I read that Elfa Burr in Wiki it has a water based yeah, really? makeup, and yes. they have to keep it's any, any time she's off stage. Yes, so. it's. A, uh, but I mean, the plus side is it is easy to get off at the end of the day. It yeah. takes me about forty minutes, just mm. for, but it does get into your pores. Right. So for about a week afterwards, your shower does have a good the tinge. If they actually shave your head, yes, do you get any extra money for that? <laughs> Spoilers. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. Um, I was asked to shave my head because they didn't want it to look as if I'm wearing a skull cap. Yeah. But when you do shave my head, it, it looks like an ugly fruit. Right. So you see, yeah. uh, oh, the dark side of the moon, whichever way you want to look at it, really. So it sort of defeated the object. <laughs> but I didn't know myself. My head is the most peculiar shape. I reckon I must have fallen out of the pram several times. <laughs> yeah, either that or I was hawked out. And <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh -huh. um, which of the Doctor Who scripts you've, uh, you've done did you think was the best? They were all excellent. Mm. I can't, uh, that's a very cruel question uh, mm -hmm. because they're all, all very good. I mean, the first epic one I did, the Pandorica Opens, that whole story was brilliant. Yeah. yeah, right? It was great. And my little bit, there's mm -hmm. only one scene with six lines, it's extraordinary, isn't it? But yeah. whatever, whatever that little scene did, it had enough for the fans to go, <gasps> Who's this guy? Who's this blue guy? Yeah. You know, so there's a, um, the uh, <coughs> a good man goes to war. Superb story. There's yeah. so much in it. Mm. Extraordinary, extraordinary. And again, the wedding of River Song. Another story with so so much in it. And mm. they're all very very different. So so for me personally, it's just doing it and being a fan. The idea that I was in one scene and then wow. eventually end up doing. You know, two more episodes and a prequel. Yeah. You know, I'm well over the moon. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Because Moffat obviously must have sort of looked at the character and thought... Well, the story I've been told is um, a Toby... Um, I've forgotten his name. Was it Haynes. Oh. Toby Haynes. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, who was the director of uh, Panorama Opens. He said to Stephen that he should bring me back because he thought... What I was doing, uh -huh. which, rather, which is rather, and I can tell you that because Toby's told me that, and also subsequently Stephen Moffat's told me that, and Stephen also said that he was thinking about uh, Dorian. He quite and he liked the character of Dorian, but he wasn't too sure what to do with him. Yeah, so, so, he, got, so he cut his head off and stuck it in a box. Yeah, <laughs> was it you'd, you'd happily return as a as a head? Yes, I've I've I let it be known that if they want Dorian back, if Stephen. Or anyone else writes an episode that they've got Dora, I'd be more than happy to return. I, I was hoping, I don't know if we, what you think of this idea. Um, obviously, I'd like to see him in the Christmas special because he's a fixture of the, of the Matt Smith era. Mm -hmm. I would like to see him with Vastra, Jenny, and Strax, and that Strax's job could be to carry the box. <laughs> Strax would probably end up playing playing football. With that. <laughs> yeah, that no, was very good. We were, there was a discussion at some point of the Barmy Army. And right. it was referred to in one of the Doctor Who magazines, so I'm not letting out anything. 
you know but uh, it's it's one of those things that they talk about but uh, uh, if it were so I of course I'd love it but uh, uh-huh. and I know I know definitely the fans want more of Dorian mm. <laughs> and um, I've let it be known I'd be happy to play Dora again um, and so we just have to wait for the call oh excellent um, okay let me just see if I can ah uh, uh, we have another Dorian question um, Dorian has always seemed morally ambiguous to say the least um, yet in A Good Man Goes to War he kind of sacrifices himself for baby Melody do you think um, he developed a more noble side or that he just never was really that bad? Deep down, I think Dora is quite a moral person. Mm. But for whatever reason, he survives amongst uh, the darker side of society. Yeah. That's, all, that's all it is. And ultimately, he's probably out for himself. And ultimately, it might be best that nobody really knows what way he's going to act. And that's how he controls people. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. See, the least you know about somebody, mm. it's easier for them to control you. Yeah. Whereas if you know somebody really well, then you control them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Think, and that's how he works. I think that's probably how he works. Um, and a question, actually, on, on the subject of sort of playing a, a good or bad character. You wanted to play the master. What did you, when Doctor Who came back, what did you think of John? Did John Sims do it how you would do it, or...? Oh. John Sims was superb, uh, but so was Derek Jacobi. Of course, Professor Yana was yes. not. So, um, uh, absolutely excellent. No, it's the character, and whoever plays it always seems to play really well. And it's because bad characters um, give actors so much more to yes. work with. Because <laughs> with the goody goody two shoes, it is a bit flat. Okay, they're goody two shoes. Whereas the baddie, as with Dorian can show a whole uh, a wide range of emotions of thoughts of behaviour mm. whereas you know, the goody two shoes has only really one or maybe two behavioural issues uh, yeah so do you like do you find Shakespearean villains appealing oh, I love them all and the thing about Shakespeare of course is, is I can't believe 400 years ago he's writing stuff that is relevant today. Yeah. So what's that tell you about society? <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't grown much at all. No, yeah. it's not. It's very curious, yeah. Every single story of Shakespeare, you will find a character of today. Oh, the, an interesting, interesting thought. Mm. Um, and that's why Shakespeare works in any language, in any society. Yeah. Um, I have a slight change um, of direction for for uh, for question now. Uh, what advice do you have for aspiring actors uh, who live with a disability or long term health problem? Don't make it your problem. Okay. Oh, it's so, as simple as that. It's, a, it's not. It's something you have to live with. Yeah. Uh, 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 but find a way of living with it. Okay. Because uh, it, it is very easy. I know myself, as somebody who was able bodied who's now got mobility issues, mm. I know and understand, for example, that it's quite easy to not do something because your leg is hurting a bit today. Right. Right? Mm. right. Um, but uh, no, you are a person with certain issues, and you will find that. Um, Generally, and generally means not always, mm-hmm. <laughs> but generally people in society have understanding of people with their own issues. Yeah. And as long as they're aware of them, they accommodate. Uh, and, and that's it, really. So, what, what did you have in mind? Why did you ask the question? Um, I, thought, I thought it would be relevant because obviously you've um, continued your career um, and you got the break in, in Doctor Who, of course. Well, ironically, yes, <laughs> ironically, um, Yes, uh, perhaps I should have been beaten up 25 years ago. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's something, it's, it, life is very strange. My grandfather said, uh, for example, that life often deals from the bottom of the pack. Right. Uh, and my grandmother used to then follow up by saying, and that's why I've got a couple of jokers up my sleeve. And that's it. You have to deal with what you're dealt mm. rather than let what you're dealt deal with you. 
Oh, okay. That's a bit, bit heavy, isn't it? <laughs> no, that's that's the way it thinks. Okay, um, don't get me wrong. There was a, an initial period. I thought I really went into a deep, deep depression because I thought that's it. And even now, it's difficult for me to get stage work because producers think I won't have the stamina for it. Right. Yeah. But um, uh, and of course, I try and go in to a, a, an audition without my walking stick, but then I've still got my limp. Right. But yeah. you mustn't allow it. You mustn't allow it. It's it's others that will have the problem with you, but you mustn't have the problem. It's what you dealt with. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is your favourite Dorian line or speech, and can you still remember it? 